It's no secret that the compact luxury crossover segment is red hot right now. You have the Volvo XC40, Mercedes-Benz GLA class, BMW X1, and the Lexus UX. Audi has also been competing in the segment since 2015 with the first generation Q3. However, that car kind of needed work from the very first day that it hit the US market. Audi went back to the drawing board and they ended up with this, the second generation Q3. The car's design has been overhauled completely from the ground up and the technology that it offered has been revamped. In very plain terms, Audi is looking for a much bigger piece of the pie within this segment and this car is how they plan to do it. Let's check it out. So much of the new Q3's design language stems from the flagship Q8 crossover, and a lot of that evidence is up front right here in the face. The sharpest elements are the new headlights and the grill. Uh, you can see, especially compared to the outgoing Q3, these are a lot more sharp, a lot more angular. They give the car a really aggressive look. And then we have this grill with eight sides to it. Uh, it's really big, really imposing, but if you look at the car from far away, everything seems to line up, looks good. And then this car in particular benefits from the S-Line package, which gives us a few extra design elements, especially down low. Compared to the outgoing Q3, Audi gave this car a facelift. Literally, most of the major design elements have been shifted up higher in the face, uh, and they look a lot more aggressive as well. Follow me around to the side of the car. Now, it makes a lot of sense when you have a new generation of a vehicle that it gets longer, it gets taller, and it gets wider. This car specifically is 3.8 inches longer than the outgoing Q3, and three of those inches are found between the wheels. So a lot of that extra space is going inside to the cabin. A few other things to point out, this car is benefiting from optional 20-inch wheels. You can also get 18s and 19s. Then we have this really aggressive character line that goes right along the belt uh, and then sort of buttresses out right here. Because we don't have body cladding. We do, it's just color matched. Looks really good here on the Q3. I'm not such a fan of when it's black body cladding, that contrast. Overall, really clean looking, nice design. And I have to say most of the redesign went to this car's face. The back is not nearly as dramatically different as the outgoing Q3, but a couple things to point out still. The taillights are a little bit more angular, more aggressive, and they do have Audi's dynamic turn signals, which look really good at a stoplight. They kind of go uh, in sequence, they're not one block. Quite the makeover going on inside the new Q3 as well. Let's start with my favorite. So 12.3 inch Audi virtual cockpit going on in front of us. It's a full digital cluster. Now you do get a digital instrument cluster standard with the Q3. You have to upgrade uh, into this one. It's equipped with the navigation and it's very highly configurable. You can do a whole bunch of adjustment, but I love the way this is laid out. Uh, it's been the case for a while now, but it's still the case that Audi navigation is one of the best manufacturer-based navigations out there. But that leads me to my next point, Apple CarPlay. You have that functionality as well. And I love here because you can use the Audi in-house navigation and keep Apple CarPlay over here. Speaking of, 10.1 inch MMI uh, touchscreen. They moved the screen from up front in the prior generation and we've also lost that clicky wheel going on down here. Audi said that their customers wanted a touchscreen, so they provided. You can also see that this screen goes with the Q8, but we're missing the additional display down here, which in that car and also the A8 as well, uh, you use for the climate controls. Physical buttons, physical knobs here, but it's a lower price point car, the Q3. Makes sense that they did it this way. And overall, the integration looks good still. In the center console area here, you have this thing that Audi calls a phone box. It's really just wireless charging, but when you toss your phone in there, uh, it actually tethers the signal with the car's in-house LTE signal and boosts it overall. So I know you would all love to hear me sit here and ramble about this car all by myself, but instead I thought I would bring a friend. We have everybody's favorite, Sofyan Bay from Redline Reviews. Say what's up. Hey, everybody. So, We've been driving this car all day and I already intro the interior a bit, but I wanted to pick your brain about a couple of things because it seems like we have pretty similar opinions yeah. on this car at this point. What's your favorite thing about the interior? Um, definitely the orange. I like the orange Alcantara and I love how it matches the exterior. I know you had mentioned that you can get that on other colors, but I really would only want it on the orange exterior for me. At least. The orange is a lot, but I love it. And it's actually crazy to think that Audi has a bit of a personality. And this is the segment to show personality, right? right? right. But the orange, like you have to imagine whoever decided to put the orange inside of this car is the same person that like is on the dance floor first at the Audi holiday party. Or I think that person must have just saw the inside of the Volvo XC40 because you can get orange carpet in that room. 
Yeah, yeah and you got to do something to match that. But overall, the interior is really clean. Um, there's no like rounded out surfaces. Everything is like a hard angle, but all the shapes just seem to work. It, it's really well put together and a big improvement over the last car. Yeah, I think the one thing the designer said is they kind of wanted to match the octagonal grill with the interior, and you can see that in the displays here. At least yeah. The, with the shape of it, it has eight sides, just like the front, which. I guess it's cool. It's a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. It's good for 228 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque, which like many things in this car is an improvement over the outgoing vehicle. And it feels fine. Yep. It feels good. Like it, it's definitely not gonna set your hair on fire, but there's really nothing in this segment that will. Um, it's certainly faster than something like a Lexus UX and it's about as fast, or at least feels as fast, something like a BMW X1. Yeah, I think BMW says like 6.4 for the X1, but this is right on par. I mean, this is, I think, what most buyers in this segment expect, because it has a lot of torque off the yeah. line. Yeah, seven seconds, zero to 60 yeah. for this, which is, again, just sort of like, eh, it's pretty good for the segment, but nothing crazy overall. Yeah. There's um, definitely room for like an SQ3. Yeah, like, we like the idea of the SQ3. Audi as of now is saying that's not going to happen no rsq3 and no sq3 but the engine from the golf r can certainly fit inside of this thing and that would be really fun to have that additional power uh, this car additionally though also has an eight speed automatic transmission it's not the zf unit that's found in some other audi products uh, it's an eight speed tiptronic transmission is what they call it uh, and again much like the powertrain nothing to complain about it's very smooth and it kind of just fades away into the background not bad overall yeah i think they nailed it with the smoothness of this car like it's it's, it's just supposed to be driven like in the urban environments or on the highway, on the highway like this it's just perfectly fine uh this comes as a shock probably to nobody but it steers like an audi <laughs> steers the steering feel is pretty much on the number side of things yeah. Uh, but you kind of come to expect that. The people in this segment, they don't really care quite as much about really heavy steering that like, you know, allows you to attack these tw twisty backwards, which this car will. It yeah. just doesn't kind of give you the confidence that you would get in like a sports sedan. It livens up a little bit when you put it in dynamic mode to, to match the, uh, the enhanced throttle response as well. But it's nothing crazy. The, the X1 is going to handle a little better. Um, but what I will say, it's extremely comfortable. The steering is nice and light and it matches the ride quality, which even on these, we have the biggest wheel option on this car, 20s. 20s yeah. You can get 18s, 19s, we're on the 20s. It's still really comfortable the way it drives. Yeah, I think they've nailed the ride and handling, especially for the segment. Um, and there's really very little to complain. Even like quietness in here, like for these massive wheels, I mean, sure, there's like a little road noise, but you know, for how good they look on the outside, it's kind of a trade off that you have to expect. Um, it's not as efficient as some of the other things in its class. It's 19 miles to the gallon city, 27 highway. I think it's 22 combined. Yeah, I mean, like, if you look at some of the competition, the Beamer and the Mercedes do over 30 on the highway. Well, and then the Lexus, that's the real fuel economy king. Especially but, the hybrid, yeah. Right, but we, I also feel like the Lexus has been, the, the knob for the oven's been turned too much toward efficiency because it's sluggish, but you get better gas mods. So it's kind of like, which, you know, which one do you want? Do you want fuel economy right. or power? Yeah, definitely. So the only piece of driver assistance tech that this car has standard is Audi PreSense, which is really just emergency autonomous braking. So any Q3 you buy will stop itself and then you have to pay for every other feature. Audi said that they package it in such a way that it's not all at the very, very uh, tippy top of the pricing structure, but you have to pay for all of it. That said, there's a lot to offer. You get adaptive cruise, uh, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, all the good stuff that you want. So the new Q3 is, as you can tell, a much improved car over the outgoing model. Are we ready to call this the leader in the segment? Not yet, not exactly, but we can definitely see how this will appeal to a much broader group of people. There's a lot going on here, and Audi has made some really quality improvements. The Q3 starts at 34,700, which is certainly class competitive, and it's already on sale. Thanks for watching.